Welcome back to the Moving Forward Show, y'all. Y'all already know what time it is, man. We're going to get straight into the show right now, man. We got my boy, Mike Success, and my boy, Dawn, from This Group, Inc., in the building. Yeah, yeah. What's happening, y'all? You know. We out here. Trying to, yeah, make it, trying to make it happen, you know? I feel like I skipped the line, man, to get y'all. Y'all y'all the, y'all the important people <laughs> in the game. Oh, I, feel man, like, that's, that's... I feel like I skipped the line. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? A, that's a... Y'all don't, like, y'all don't feel important? No, nah, we're important. You know, we just... We're just behind the scenes. We just behind y'all, the don't scene. like, y'all don't like being put on, on Front Street, I see. Nah. The nah, humble. Really. Humble. Yeah. The humble, you know, but we got to step from behind the, the curtain. We, we, we got to... Was it the Wizard of Oz? We're not, we're no more, no longer the Wizard of Oz. Anymore. The puppet master is showing themselves yeah. now. Yeah, yes. and pardon the pun, we gotta get it flowing. You no know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> gotta get it flowing. <laughs> Yo, so we gonna go this way. Okay. Let the world know who you are, what you did before you came into this group. Okay, I give you the, uh, the shortest version. The short version, short right? Version as possible. Um, I was born in, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I grew up <laughs> around entrepreneurs. Um, were you born in Brooklyn, Queens? No, no, no. I was actually born in Manhattan in front of the Bronx and I've traveled. Okay, gotcha. You know what I mean? Um, but from the business side, grandmother had a bar for 40 years in the South Bronx. Um, saw that. My mom, um, when I was like 10 years old, had a business. I named the business. I gave it a slogan at 10 years old. Got her her first three orders at 10 years old. Wow. My I'm mom in. took me down to the Bahamas and she was like, she said, this is this is your commission. And I think that kind of put the bug for me, mm-hmm. and, you know, as far as for the business side. Um, then I always loved business, um, loved music. I started as a dancer, actually. You know what I mean? Break so dancer. Like, break dancer. BX shit. But then also like, you know, this is not a filter. The gray is not a filter. <laughs> no doubt, so no doubn't. School was scrapped. <laughs> Big Daddy Kane a bit back. Mm-hmm. I was getting throw, boom, mm-hmm. split, pull up. That's what I was doing. <laughs> and then, um, you know, we had a, a manager for the group. Like, I was a background dancer, and a lot of things just wasn't happening. You know, I started okay. to learn about the the, the 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 embellishments of the industry. Okay. You know what I mean? And then my cousin, at one point, I want to say, like, when I was around 20, he was like, yo, I got this girl. You want to manage her with me? I had no idea what that, what that meant. I read a book called All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald Passman. And that's kind of like how I started and just went, went, went. Then got to a point where we had a, uh, you know, I went through a couple of situations. Actually, my first, I always point to him. Right. My first artist that I actually had was a reggae dude that I really- Nah, I'm him. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And uh, then I got a hip hop dude and then just kind of traveled, right? Like kind of was just trying to find my way, tapping shoulders, staying up in offices and mm-hmm. six hours, whatever. Um, then got to a point where I was managing an Italian dude. Uh, we got a deal on Fuse for a TV show, eight episode deal. Right. Um, thought that was going to be the trajectory. And then that just didn't go the way it was supposed to. Felt like the rug got pulled. Full transparency. I, I went through like a depression. Okay. And then I kind of stepped away from all of this, like the music, all of that. And then I kind of got back into it with um, my nephew is Chiclet. I know him since he, through marriage. I know him since he was nine. He started doing this influencer stuff. We rocked out. I could save that. I don't want to get too Yo, long. But then you just took my whole question I had for you for the for the end of the show. I was about to ask you that, but you just answered the shit. Damn. Yeah. So, Dawn. Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, well, just a short version. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a Jamaican <laughs> um, from the Bronx. Right. Then moved to Long Island. Um, essentially, just been around a hustler my whole life, you know? Okay. So, you know, my father was the the first uh, dispensaries in Harlem. So when I tell people Ooh. like, yo, you know, so as a kid, you saw what was going on. Selling but not, that good but shit. Not, but, not, but, but not seeing what was going on. Right. But understood the concept of what business was. So he opened up a, you know, he opened up, you know, stationary stores, right? Yeah, that's what With they no were. stationary. With no stationary. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, I opened up, you know, my own clothing store at, the, at a teenager, like 18. So from there, you know, just figuring out what the music business and the entrepreneurship in my life, because it was very, like, prevalent in my life. Then, you know, started working with some artists, started managing people. And then, you know, my first deal that we I've got was with Red Bull. So I managed two guys. And then this was a teen. I didn't know. Yeah. 
we make X amount of dollars. Like I made like thirty grand. Right. I'm seventeen years old. What I'm doing with it, I feel like I'm rich. Right. But at the end of the D's day, at seventeen, then yeah, right. yeah. But at the end of the day, it, it went towards something more, you know, more stable, which is when we opened the store. So it was just a bunch of other things that was going on, and then um, fast forward, you know, started working with artists, um, worked with a bunch of artists, and you know, worked with companies and you know, labels and in the building, out the building, you know, and just trying to find my way in this music thing. Cause I'm not an artist per se, but my art is to get the people what they need. And I know how to connect the dots. So, you know, shout out to my man Dot, like a dot connector, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And essentially be becoming that next phase of what my career should be. Okay. Um, and I was like, you know, management is definitely something that I wanted to do, became a manager. And then all of a sudden, um, just started painting my way with this, man. I mean, I'm not gonna go in more because right. I know you're gonna ask more questions, but that's essentially, you know, the start of this entrepreneurship. I saw my dad and it turned into this, this whole okay. next space. Now, Mike said he went through something where, you know, he he got a deal with Fuse and then it didn't go right and it kind of put him in a depression state. Mm -hmm. And his nephew kind of put him back in the game. Mm -hmm. Made him want to do this again, right? Mm -hmm. What was your point where you was like, "This shit ain't working"? Uh, when my car got repossessed, um, I thought to myself, "Like, man, this is it." I, I had to think to myself, "Is this something that is going to be real for me or not? Or, did I pay rent, or, or you know, pay for studio time for these people, or pay for my car that gets me to work, or miss three payments because we had a project coming out?" And it had me kind of sit in my car <laughs> at night just so, just in case the repo man came around, I could right. spend the block. Not knowing that what I was doing was building my character and my callus in my, in, my, in my mind. Like, yo, you can do this, but there's going to be some growing pains. And that right. was my one of my turning points. It, several turning points, but that one right there really hit me. The risk wasn't greater at that time. Correct, exactly. Got you. So how did y'all two link up? <laughs> The real story. I, so I'm a no. On, <laughs> Chance, <laughs> can I say? Okay. So why are you laughing? Yeah. So 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 <laughs> she said no. <laughs> so I'm gonna pause this from jump. But anyway, um, I DM'd him. <laughs> right. We shared a mutual friend. Who's a mutual friend? Man? So the mutual friend was uh, Hip Hop Mike in High Seven. Hop, shout out to Hip Hop Corporate Mike. Mike now. Yeah, oh, Corporate, right. yeah, Corporate now. Mike now. Okay. So um, I used to see this guy that do these videos. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I said, that's Mike's success. Okay. So I hit um, Mike, Hip Hop Mike up. I was like, yo, this guy seems cool. He said, yo, hit him. You guys should meet. I think you guys would connect. And da, da, da. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I hit this dude up in his DM, pause, and, uh, and essentially, <laughs> You know, he dubbed me, like hit he me. Dubbed with, him? Yeah, like, uh, like ah, yeah, we're gonna work, whatever. I guess because he, you know, Mike don't look like the type to talk to nobody. <laughs> yo, <laughs> fact. Yo, that's crazy. That's you a look fact. like you just be. You oh, don't me, even I look read like that. Shit. I look like I look like I'm like conceited, cocky, like that you don't kind talk of guy. to nobody, no, yo. Right? See, you know, so, yo. You gotta know somebody to talk to. So this that's nigga. exactly. So that's what ended up happening. <laughs> so I, he dubbed me, maybe like twice, and then he hits me back like, yo, he responds but real vague, like. You know, one of them, oh, we have same people, so I have to say something. And then that's how it started. But then the relationship started. We then met, like, the second year into pandemic. Right. So, like, January something. What is it? I'm January? pretty sure you got your reasons to act that, that way. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't dub him. He wanted to like I didn't dub him. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. He says it. He's gonna. He's gonna say it on every pod <laughs> that, that I dubbed him. He dubs me, but it's, all good. it's good for the story. Yeah. No, it might be a slight dub. So yeah. what happened? See? No, no, no. Never the dub. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it again. It was a, a situation like I I had asked Hip Hop Mike because he had reached out to me again because I didn't know. You ain't know him, right? And I was like, is he? You know, who is this dude? And he was like, nah, he's cool. Like like he yeah. said, y'all should meet. Y'all should meet. So then. After that, right, you know what I mean? Like, we kind of went back and forth or whatever. And then we had set up. He was like, yo, you should come to the office. And that's what happened. We went to the office. And then once I got there, it was supposed to be like an hour meeting. Like, right. you know, just a regular whatever. Mm -hmm. But being there, it was like, it was crazy finding somebody in this industry that went through the same things that I went through. Um, and was just good 
a good person, you know, morally and the values and the ethics. And it was just crazy. He was there for like three hours. Word. And then, you know, we left. And then the next morning, I called him. And now I'm going to super pause this. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I said, I was like, yo, I was in the shower and I was thinking about you. Hold on. <laughs> I said, hold on a second. I said, yo, I think we should kind of try to form like some sort of coalition. I don't know what it is. I said, but we should come together and super pause. And it should be called this group. Yeah, and it should stand right. for trust, honesty, integrity, and success. And let's go. That's and, dope. Too. And he was like, let's go. Yeah. Like immediately. It was like. You felt the energy from yo, the gate. Bro. Immediately. And it was supposed to be something even a lot, um, a lot more people involved, right? Because when we, we, we hit it off immediately, right? Yeah. And he was like, yo, I'm going to call my guy in Atlanta. I was like, yo, I'm going to call my guy in LA. And a lot of it was black and Spanish. Okay. Not that it was, it, it just happens to be. And it was just like, we just felt like there was a lot of things that weren't happening. And it was just like, kind of like, yo, let's do like a band of brothers and do what we got to do. Right. And through that, people fell off, which was fine. Everybody had their own lives. and But he and I That's just dope. stayed the course. And it was just like, you know, it was just crazy how meeting him and even spiritually, bro. Right. You know, like we're spiritually connected. And right. it's just like, yo, it's just, it's, it's sometimes it's like you can't even explain it in words. And you just got to kind of just go. And we just went, you know what I mean? And it was like, is it easy? No. And, you know, what the, the thing about he and I, what I, what I, what I really like about he and I and meeting somebody like him is not to sound cheesy or corny, but it's like when you're in a relationship, right? And you mm-hmm. you get your heart broke. Some people just be like, yo, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never right. going to fall that way. I'm never going to get... But he and I had gotten... I can curse? Yeah, hell yeah. I, I can curse? Okay. <laughs> Fucked over, screwed over, you know what I'm saying? Sta- you know, Stabbed in your back or whatever, but still believed that there was good. Okay. Right? And then, like I said... When when I saw some, it was literally because they even people that meet me and know me, and I'm like, oh, you gotta meet my partner. I'm like, yo, he's a Jamaican version of me. Right. That's it. Same way, same moral, same values, and it's just crazy. And it's just like, and and I think that that's what, you know, the energy and everything, and why we why we rock out. Like no you doubt. know what I mean. Nah, so when sure. so when y'all when you all was going through all of this when you was just forming this group. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you said that your wife passed away. Rest in peace to her. Yeah, thank, yeah, yeah. Did this happen all around the same time? So my wife was sick um, before then. She had a uh, stage four uh, uh, kidney failure. So she was going through dialysis. So in this process, um, she was around this process. So this is, and the funny thing about this is, she never physically met Mike, mm. but she heard his voice constantly on the phone, right? So. Um, with that, it was one, one of those things that she was a, the judger of energy and every, anything before Mike, she was like, I, they're going to drop off. They're not going to, they're not good for you. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. But she was right. And she was like, every time she hears me speak with Mike, she goes, that's the guy he's supposed to be a part in business. Wow. With. So ever since, so since that, wow. it was uh, um, the aspect of, this is my part, this is my soul brother. So when people say stuff like that, I'm like, yeah, well, this is the person that, you know, people always talk about their soul mates and all that mm-hmm. stuff, but they don't talk about like, you know, people that are not, I guess, blood that become your family. No doubt. And Mike is my family. So outside of us being business partners and, you know, everything else when running around with the, and management, this is my brother. You know, we, 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 we attribute our success to speaking every day at 815. Since we since the inception of of our company, we 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 don't miss a call. Every morning at eight fifteen, we discuss everything that has to be done with the company and what's the execution of those things. So we give our so we so we have this like over communication so that we'll be able to be successful. That's and that's because of obviously prior things that came with other business partners or whatever. So we understand the do's and don'ts. And this is one of the do's that allows us to be the success, be so, successful. Every so other basically night. communication is like most important That's when you're fact. doing business with a partner. That's a fact. Percent. Percent. All right, so now let's get into the, the beef part of this. Of this. Uh-huh. What exactly that y'all do? 
What is it, is it exactly what you do? So it started out as management, yep. right? The way that we got together was on a, you know, that coalition aspect thought process. It was for me started with Chicle and Millennia. I was like, okay, he may he may have more relationships for them. Mm-hmm. The same thing he was with Jufu. Like, oh, he may have more situations. So mm-hmm. it started out as management. And I always put this the the analogy is like a, a marriage. Right. I had a son and a daughter. He had a son. And now we have all these kids together, Mm -hmm. right? So, but the management, and then it's kind of, all of these things happen, the other pieces happened organically, right? So the marketing agency happened organically because Don's relationships with brands or agencies and mine, they would be like, who else you got? Yep, right. Right? So it was kind of like, I'd rather go through you because we know how you work. Okay. And and in this industry, it's like, you you never know, especially on the influencer side, right? Mm -hmm. The influencer side, a lot of young dudes um you know young people let me just put it like that so some people just don't have the work ethic i'm not saying everybody but it's just that they don't so when they find guys like us they're like okay i want to work with you yep. you know what i mean um the music kind of is there too that's his aisle i okay. don't do that aisle <laughs> that's I, what i'm going to add yeah the aisle the music aisle that's oh, his aisle yeah. i like the strategy and the marketing but i'm i think i'm jaded from it so i kind of like be like all right that's done um <laughs> And then we have a podcast network now that happened organically. organically. Yep. And then media, right? So that's like the production side. Right. You know, we have a situation with a with a with a network as our first project. Um and it's all within the house. And now we're building pieces. Like literally, mm-hmm. we have all of this stuff here. And it's just like it's it's the, again, it was he and I. Yeah. Do y'all build these? Content creators like these kids that's on the internet going viral, jumping from train to train and well, smacking people and running. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, t- I'll tell you, you want to answer that one? Nah, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> just to even say, like, so our content creators that we do have are, Mike always says it, they have talent. Not saying that those individuals don't got talent, or but they're doing a lot of that stuff for the clout because then when they get really hurt, they get hurt. So we don't have content creators that slam their heads in, in a wall right. for views. We have content creators that are actually thought processes of what they're doing for content, right? So uh, clearly Mike and I are not the ones holding the cameras. They started it themselves some way, somehow, but we're the ones that help them formulate it. So the management aspect from influencers is formulation. So we formulate the process of it. And with me, from a music standpoint, I kind of saw this a little bit first because my first um, artist that I managed or, you know, I guess social media at that time was from Vine. And it was a guy named Live Like Davis. So I've already, I was started to pivot into this world already. I, I kind of foresee it from that time, but then it was like still into music, still doing what we're doing. Even at the end of one of our clients that we did get, he's from Brooklyn and he ended up getting his deal with Island because a song went viral on TikTok. Okay. So there was so many different, there was a pivot, then they're understanding what the content creator and, and their and their talent is. And then also, there's also the third part, which the, when a content creator is a music artist, what you build out for the music side as well. So there's so many different pieces and we don't build the content creator. They build themselves and we help them formulate it to turn it into a business. Right. So like, you know, one of our slogans is, you know, we don't create moments, we create careers. So the moment is cool, but the career, after the moment was what's there to build. We have right. to build out the career. Because a lot of a, a lot of these kids is going viral mm-hmm. and they chasing it and that's all they doing is just going viral, but they don't got no money. Correct. Right. And that's and that's the thing as far as with the moments and the careers, the people that are slamming their head through the wall and everything like that, they getting the views and that's cool, right? But that's numbers, right? That's just what this what this, you know, industry is. Mm-hmm. The career side is management, right? So we like we were saying, as far as the agency, and then we have the management. The agency side, we can represent anybody. If you have numbers and it's a moment, mm-hmm. we can set. You know, you may be hot for the moment, right? For the moment, and and we can represent you and say, hey, brand A came through, and hey, you wanna, and we'll put those pieces together. Right. We're very selective with the management because that's a career, and nice. we have to be with you, and we gotta. That's such a lift. That's not, hey, I just have a deal for you. That's What's your mindset like? Like any new person that comes in, we speak to them as a person. And it's because the person got to be right before the business can do anything. Right. And right. if we don't feel like they're a good person, that seriously, and they don't have like some sort of talent that you can, you know, yeah. forge a that career. You could actually market the right, right. way. Right. There's, mm-hmm. thing, there's things that you can do. Because again, everybody thinks, let's look, the cost of entry is having a phone. Yes. Somebody thinks they could go like this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get bread and I'm going to go do that. 
cool. But that's that I blame the circle, right? And that's why, like, as far as for Don and I being older and being through this, and we've said this before, this is the, the influencer is the new hip hop artist. Yep. Right. The difference is is that back then when brands were taking advantage of the hip hop artists, nobody knew. They didn't have an example. We yeah, I'm I'm damn near the same age as, as hip hop. No doubt. So I watched it, <laughs> right? And it's like, I already saw that. You're not doing that to the to the influencers, especially not to ours. And we'll we'll have that. Oh, well, you know what? I could get this person and I could get them for such and such. So go get them. Go ahead. Not over here. You're not gonna take advantage of our people. No doubt. Our people meaning, you know, not on my Malcolm X yeah, no doubt. aspect, but you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> our people is who we rock with. Right. Our family. I don't care what your skin tone, I don't care what you are, but if you're with us, you're not doing that. You're protecting them from the Exactly, culture exactly. A hundred percent, bro. A hundred percent. And that's you know, it be it's it's difficult. It's I don't like I don't even like using it's challenging sometimes okay. to navigate that because you know, when you find people and good people like like yourself, you know, linking with Chas. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. It's like it's Shout again, out to Chastity. It, shout out to Chastity. You know what I'm saying? She don't want to be shouted out, but yeah. shout you shout out, out, baby. Shout but out you grab that, like like what happened here. We felt energies and like, okay, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> because it's hard to find these people. And it's just such a transactional world. And now this is even worse than hip hop because people want things like this. Microwave error. Everything. Oh, and we got to teach these brands, even the people that are in influencer marketing, they don't get it. They don't get it. And we're right. we're teachers. We're, it, it, it's still, like Don says, yeah. it's still a teenager, the, yeah. the, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the industry. And we're here and we'll do what we got to do, but you're going to know rocking with us yeah, it's different. or dealing with us. You're going to be against me up front. That's why when people say it's trust, honesty, integrity, that leads to success. That's all you need to know about us on how we move. And that's it. You that's know what dope. I mean? Nah, for sure. That's dope. That's so dope, man. So is it anything that you specifically look for when y'all when y'all getting somebody to, to manage, but not manage, because y'all don't manage? No, we do. We do, yeah. but we're just kind of our so bandwidth like is kind of yeah, tapped nah, we, yeah. We're looking for managers if anybody wants to manage. Look, what do y'all look for? So I mean, do they gotta pay y'all to work with them? Nah, or, nah. So like, we, get, we get a lot of those. We get a yeah, lot of those. Wants to pay. Yeah, we we got we get a lot. Of, <laughs> nah, we get a lot of those. We get a Pardon lot that. of those though. It's best with you. Yo, we'll pay you. Yeah, yeah. We'll pay mm-hmm. you to manage me. But that's not it. Yeah. What we do is see the consistency of that person that who's, you know, because sometimes they may not have tens of thousands of followers, but they have they have a system that works and that they're mm-hmm. consistently putting out. So for us, what we do is we want to manage. The expectation on those individuals when they come in. Mm-hmm. So the bi- the biggest thing is that I want to be an influencer that has ten million followers. All right, cool. So what are you gonna do to get to get that? And then once we go on their pages and we kind of can see if that's what they want to do. Essentially, if somebody wants to be something, they're gonna do it. Right. So if they're doing it, we can now help navigate that because even though you may have like say five or ten thousand followers, that doesn't mean you can't get a brand deal or get some type of company that to work with you. If they see if you create content that is compelling. And they and it resonates with them. You'll be able to get the situation. You may not get the two hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollar deal, but you'll get a twenty thousand dollar deal or two thousand dollar deal that you wasn't getting before. So, and y'all negotiate these deals. And we negotiate 100%. those deals. One hundred percent. What do y'all do to negotiate these deals? How do y'all put that all together and be like set up a package for who y'all working with? Well, we we really don't do packages like that. You know what I mean? Like we we we, we pride ourselves in working within a brand's budget. So you may sit there and you may say, hey, I want such and such, but your budget doesn't can't have them. Right. We'll work something out and we'll try to figure it out because, again, we want to help you. We always negotiate. We always come to the table on how do we help you? How can we help you if at all possible? Because there is finances is in the, is in, in the situation, no right? Doubt. That's always in the equation, right? Mm-hmm. But there's also certain situations like, you know, where things are done for nothing. Right. And but it's not for nothing. It's just that we see that there's a long term play here Mm -hmm. that you may not see. Like we don't convince anybody to do anything. We sit here and hey, this is what it is, whatever the offer is. This is what we feel. What do you what do you like? Okay, I'll do this. Like what we like to do is if someone we ask them, hey, this came this came across. How much you how much you cool with doing this for five thousand dollars? We love coming back. Hey, we got you twenty five. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. and it's not about it's not about because we get more money because we got you more money. It's about that's our creative process. That's yeah. our freestyle. That's our butterflies when we send, okay, this is what we say. And now me and it was like, 
yo, all right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Nah, let's see for sure. Cause, no, yeah. that's because that's what we love that's to what we do. do. No yeah. doubt. You know what I mean? And the concept too is that it, it's it's even trying to it's showing that the influencer are, are, are valuable, right? So the content creator nowadays is becoming the new commercials, majority of them, right? So you have content creators that are getting that people are offering them billions of dollars or a billion dollars, and the content creator turned it down. What that what that person did was he shook up the industry because if mm. a company is all willing to offer you a billion dollars, that means you're worth you know four more, billion. Yeah, yeah, more than that. So for us, for for Mike and I, what we what we're doing is we're seeing the landscape of how this thing is and knowing that the content creator is going is essentially going to be key and crucial for the next five to ten years. And this is not even just coming from us. This is coming from the platforms themselves talking about this because ultimately. They are. They're come. You know, these brands are coming in and going. Here is such and such money. Do some stuff for you know for some type of brand. What we're doing is, I, I see our content creators as athletes, and Mike and I. That's that's what it is because ultimately they always push to the masses, like right. in like a LeBron James or whoever. So our our you know top creator gets as much as impressions as the top athlete in the, in, in the NBA. So we, I see them as getting their deals as, you know, I don't know, 10 year, four year deal, you know, $4 million, $5 million, however that works out. But those are the deals that essentially that we want to revolutionize for especially black and brown content creators, especially for new, you know, I mean, we work with everybody, but especially content creators that are in New York City that they deem as urban, which we hate that, but that's just essentially yeah. what they deem us as. And we have to get out of that stigma. They put you in a box and when they, they put say you that. In, mm-hmm. And they put you in a box. So when we go to the table and come for these deals, they look at us and go, yo, you know, how do you, why do you think this person is worth this much? I'm like, what do you mean? The individual that you had before has less than them and y'all gave them X, Y, and Z, but we can then provide you a community. Remember, they say that we're the ones that make things popping and we're the ones that make things, you know, move. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to come to us anyway. Why don't just pay the money and then we'll help you build, not just pay the money at one time, come into a partnership with us and help, and we'll help you build your brand. But sometimes some of these brands don't get it so we have to do the hard work sometimes ourselves to letting them see it. Like like right. Mike said, you know, give them that free that free sample. <laughs> like you know, it's just like we on the streets. Yeah. So this is all <laughs> dealing with social media, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How y'all feel about this AI that's taking control? Do you think that uh, affect what y'all doing? It it actually so AI does a few things, right? So clearly it messes up certain aspects at this moment in time when it comes to content creation and content right. creation. What it does is it makes speed. It's everything is now faster, right? So, the, but the thing is though, AI will take out the feeling out of certain things. Right. Because it, it becomes, it becomes robot right? The one thing that AI at this moment in time, I won't, can't say never, is actually have human emotion. Yes, you right? do. So yeah. if you see in even some like K-pop artists, if you know the way they speak, it's real boom. Boom! It's real, like robotically, because they're taught how to speak. Mm-hmm. No disrespect to them; that's just mm-hmm. the way they run their system. Mm-hmm. But with us, it's different. I, you can't mimic certain type of, like even things that go viral. Right? You know what I'm saying? So for us, the AI, we're gonna embrace it um, because we're gonna have. No matter how, even if we fight against it, it's, it's still on its way. So we have to embrace it, and we have to be able to be able to utilize it even for content creation. So editing will become easier. Mm-hmm. You know, even take, you know, videos will become easier. And we would have to essentially take that and then be able to kind of like put it out in the masses even more. That's that's so essentially what that, the AI is doing. Y'all work hands-on with your, with your clients or you, do y'all have someone under y'all that'll work with them? No, nah. nah, that's why like, as far as the bandwidth, as far as that's why taking on more management clients. Right, so because, y'all could be more Exactly, because scene. again, we care. Right, and that's the thing is, is that somebody had told us from the beginning as we were building, they were like, listen, people are coming here because they want to work with you guys. And the thing is, is that even in the past, you know, prior to even us building and, you know, we have the same, uh, you know, morals and mythology about about um, this type of stuff. It's like, we can't, we're not going to manage somebody if we don't think we're going to give you what you need. Right. It may not be about your talent or anything like that. We would be doing you a disservice because what happens? We say we manage another 40, right? right? Let's just say we have 100 clients that Mike and Don manage. The last 20% are, 
it's tough. It's tough to be super hands on. And we literally just had a conversation today about, hey, you know what? Let's start scheduling some time. Like if it's every Monday, yep. mm -hmm. a half hour with each creator. Right. Yep. Just so we can kind of be in tune because there is so much that we have going on and we've come into the more of the overseer aspect. Then we wouldn't put somebody we would ideally like to have junior managers. We have one, right? But we that's when anybody says you're looking for more talent, no, looking for more managers. Manager. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you can't just say, hey, you go with them. Can't do that. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. Can y'all say two, you work with Chick, Chick is, your, is your nephew, mm -hmm. and he's under this group. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I also know that um, Mr. Commodore mm -hmm. yep. works for y'all, right? Mm -hmm. So I say, in the industry is monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody want to be with the, with the lit people. Right. 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 If they see one influencer getting you know, the planes deal, like mm -hmm. your nephew. Mm -hmm. Everybody else gonna wanna follow through. They see Mr. Commodore getting deals on, he's on um, Power with 50 and mm -hmm. movie deals and all that. They gonna rush off for that. Yeah, well, we've had, it's funny, cause we had a situation <laughs> yeah. similar to that where two of our clients had gotten a certain deal, a certain brand, and it was just like a one-off. Mm -hmm. And somebody else was like, yo, how come I didn't get that? And we said, cause that's not your brand. Yeah. Because listen, at the end of the day, we can sit here and if you if you just want to get bread, we can do that, right? We we just choose not to. Right. Because we care about your brand. We don't care about this weekend, right? Like money is not our driving force at all. At all. We don't convince, we don't sit there, there's deals coming in and be like, me and Don be like, yo, we did something, we gotta figure this out. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. We're not gonna do it. Not us, not them. We turned down stuff before we even brought it to them. Right. Six figure deals, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? Two separate instances of that. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's not about the bread. And if we're gonna, if we're supposed to build you, another thing we do, which is unconventional, is anything like guys that are coming up, anything under five hundred dollars. Me and Don don't take our cut. Yeah, that's enough. Wow. It's like, yo, you know what? Because yeah. that could help y'all. That could be a sell bill. I don't know what it could be. Right. Right. And if we're sitting here preaching so pro creator and pro artist and trying to literally build you yeah we could take that yeah it was my it was my it was my cut for everything no right. there's a lot of situations that we don't take bread on yeah right and not because we don't want to right it's just it's that just because we know the situation, situation. everybody's right. different so yeah. going back to that we always lead with brand first right. if somebody says yeah like then if you have to get real it's like hey look they wanted this mm -hmm. and the numbers are here this is what you have to do because a lot of people still see the Oh, like you said, oh, they got that. But 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 look at the body of work. Right. How they got this and why it is, because you see the consistency and where it is and what it is. And somebody had came to us, you know, won't mention names, whatever, right. but they were like, yo, I love how Cheek and Millenni do. I like what they do on IG and then they got the YouTube. Now they got the pocket. This is crazy. It's yeah. clean too. When you look at their videos, it's clean. Right. It almost looked like a movie. Right. No, for sure. And 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 there's a and there's a process and 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 you know. All, all, all managers do is really be on the side, right? It's like when you're going, I don't know if anybody remembers driver's ed, but, <laughs> you know, you sit there and you got the gas and the brake too, but they mm -hmm. got the steering wheel. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we can say whatever we want. That's what happens. We'll come, something, whatever the situation is, we'll say all of this, and then what do we say at the end? But at the end of the day, whatever you want to do... It's on you. Because no, we're not sure. yes men. You know what I mean? We're going to say what we feel. That's it. Even us to each other. It's so y'all don't control y'all don't control none of the content that these people nah, coming nah, out. No, nah, because nah. Well, see that's that's how you know the big boxes, the companies that they can take control of people's of people's content and also people's creative control. Right. That's not that's not our job. Our job is to essentially once that's created, once it comes out, our job is to find out what can help the brand go where it needs to go. So. If, if whatever video that Chicla Millennial or Jufo or Kenstar puts out, that's something that they wanted to put out, and then we need to be the ones that to play. You know, now we playing chess. Okay, this one we gotta make this move over here because that would, right. and, mm -hmm. and that's and that's essentially what it is. But we don't control how they do their content pieces at all. That's it would it would we wouldn't even be the managers that we are if we've done that. That's crazy. Yeah. So y'all don't get, he said that you do the music side. Yeah. So let me ask you a music yeah, question. <laughs> yeah, Al 7, yo. <laughs> Why you don't do the music no more? Um, I, I'm just, I don't, I don't like, 
honestly, because coming from the hip hop situation, um, I'll speak I, when I say I don't do the music. It's he runs point on that. I don't like to deal with any of the just the the, attitudes of the artists, bro. And 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 honestly, like even though I come from that culture, I'm to a point in my life. Like I protect my temple, and I'm not saying that he doesn't. That's what you're saying, but, but, I... but no, 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 no. But he, <laughs> but he enjoys, like he enjoys yeah, that's that. That's my passion, right? But he, that's like you know, going to the studio. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm over that for me. Right. It's fine, you know what I mean? And that's why, that's why I needed to get with a dude like that because I enjoyed it. I love yeah, music. Bounce off each other. I love yeah. music, bro. You gotta understand that I'm, I'm, I'm a hip hop head. I like, I'm a creative at heart. Like I'm born from hip hop, and I love it. But there's some things that I don't enjoy about it, and then the business I don't mm. like about it. So it's like, with with Don being able, like that's his passion, right? I'm able to at least help with strategy, creativity, the marketing because I love that side of right. it. I just don't like, honestly, I don't like being in the trenches of hip hop anymore. Like, I mean, I'll go, I could go to, a pro, I could go anywhere, yeah. right? I'm just like, I've just been so jaded from it. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like. My thing, I'm like, nah, like he'll tell you. I I'll go you. like this, be like, like nah, I'm over there. That's I why get you. It's I seven. That's that's me. Now I the question I had to, to ask you about mm -hmm. this music is, um, this was the first time in hip hop we wasn't charted on Billboard. Okay, right. So I was just talking to my boy, um, Dress from Yap City. Mm -hmm. We was having the discussion about it. He was like, um, that's because the executives was not spending no marketing dollars anymore, and they just going to the artist that's going viral just for that moment. Correct. And it's killing music. How do you feel about that? I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have something to say after. Yeah, I mean, this guy, <laughs> he, he don't like music, but you see what he's saying? No. He can't wait. So just to even back up, so I'm a, I'm a, cause it's a two part answer for me, right? So I'm gonna just back up. So, so we have an art, we have a content creator that song went viral on TikTok. It's from Brooklyn. His name is Jufu. The song is called Who Are You, right? Who Are You is, was the beginning of people getting their deals on TikTok. Okay. So their, his deal was constructed by myself okay. and a slew of people to ensure that he didn't get whatever. You know what I'm saying? Jerked. Facts, right? So those did, So and he was one of the first content creators on that platform to end up getting his situation. I didn't say the first, I said one of the first. So, mm -hmm. so when the white come and fat check, and you can see it though, it's there. Who are you, Jufu? But nevertheless, though, his song went viral, so he was able to get a situation, right? So I'm gonna fast forward it because now your guy said that he's not there, they're not spending the money, you know, on marketing dollars. But essentially, what has to happen is the product has to be good, right? And I think what's happening is it's not this, they're putting out a mass quantity of music. And and some and most of it is mid, you know what I'm saying. So if you have mid music, block work, music. yeah, yeah, not even mid, mid yeah, is good, yeah. block work. Yeah, so so if you got, <laughs> mid, got mid music, <laughs> Reggie Bush, we don't we don't. It's not gonna get to the. For me, this is what how I see it. Not more so. It may be something different on how they, you know, how Billboard and all that stuff they they chart. Uh, clearly, it is a, it's a different criteria. Mm -hmm. But then you have Uzi that comes out and drop and put and drops out his. His album, the pink, the pink the tape, pink, the pink tape, and it does over. It sells more than everybody else in the last few months. Mm -hmm. So essentially, when that neck, when that list come back out again, clearly Uzi's going to be on it. Yeah. So, so you he's know, on it now. Actually, he just he just got on it. But this is the thing, though. They based that off of a time period. Now that Uzi put that out, it's now going to become something else. Mm -hmm. Now when it gets on there, there's going to be more stuff to talk about. I think those lists for me. Are just it's just talking pieces of why something didn't happen to kind of be able to have people push some type of agenda, not no conspiracy stuff, but mm -hmm. an agenda like yo, you need to be on this list to be relevant, or you need to be on this to be. You don't really because there's a lot of artists like a person like say like Jordan Lucas, it's one of the most talented artists I've seen to, to date. Right. You know the what his concepts, the way he shoots, all this, just even the way the rapping aspect, mm -hmm. all of these things that he's putting. But he's not. He doesn't. He's not. Validated because of those that, that the billboard. Right. He just knows that I put out good content, I put out good music, and what ends up happening, he's able to now stream it on his own platform. Right. And if he chooses to, he could then he could then have his own right. chart right. on his own on platform. His own so it just depends on what you're doing, um, and if you really 
want to be on those lists. You, I guess you get you tailor your songs to get to be on that list, but it can't be mid or block work. You know what I mean? Can't be block work. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, like I said, like I don't like to be involved. I'm I'm very aware of it, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, the answer for that is that the fact that hip hop became a business is a gift and a curse. Mm. You see a lot of billionaires, right? But what's happened is, is that now it's not about the music anymore, right? And what's happened is, is that think about it: if you have money, and you want, and you have, I don't insert any type of bread, mm-hmm. and you have him, and you have me, right? I come in, whatever you, as a fan, you're like, damn, damn, Mike, is fire. Yeah. Don come in play music, it's cool, but he has a following. He got numbers now. From an investment standpoint. I would love to rock with you, but my higher ups, I, I, it's, it's a becoming investment now. I got to put my money on that. I mean, right. those right. are the odds there are so much better than here, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's the difference. Is that the again the influencer is here, so is music. Right. There's too many people out there that are not talented enough, but their work ethic is crazy, and they're gonna make you feel them, and that's what's gonna happen. And then you're gonna force, you're gonna be forced. You're going to be forced to sign that because you may sit there and be like, damn, but I love this. It's crazy. Right. But it's a it's a business. So what are you, you going to do? You're going to sign your mom, your sister. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's what ends up happening. And what I think, but what happens then again is that the labels and the industry gets lazy because now that's done. And rather than putting development and putting more fire into it, they just open up their pocket and, right. and say, hey, we're going to do this rather than, yeah, they got the number, but they still need development. This is what I'm saying. Artist not everybody is a not, not everybody is a is a blank sheet where oh they got numbers okay that's easy no they got they got numbers but look what we can do with them and they don't want to do that anymore because it's on to the next I'm gonna go over here there's too much music everybody's talented that American Idol all these shows you know, we could go down the block I guarantee you we'll find somebody that's, that's nice that's a no, fact guaranteed that's but a you, fact but from a music standpoint if you look at like La Russell right he's de- he's, he's developed he developed his own system. And he systematically was able to put out his own music. Mm-hmm. And he not only was systematically able to put his own music, he was also be able to get the attention of individuals to help him do such. You know, like Whole Vein, rest in peace. You have, you have, you have also Russ, and then you have a, a slew of other people that believe in him, right? So the thing is, is is about now the independent aspect is is there to help an artist. Mm-hmm. So it's not a, just about. Clearly, if you want to get to the next level, the majors is going to help you get to the next level. But right now, that artist development stage has to come from you and the, and the team around you. Because what happens is you can now build, you can now have, you can go, you can do your own rehearsal time. You can do all of these things to get yourself together. Mm-hmm. And if you have a good team and that's it's structured that way, you'll be able to not only make money, but also be able to get yourself to where you need to be. So that's when you come best. to interviews, you could do, you know what I'm saying? You, you could start yourself in the arts development. So most people are like, yo, I want to be independent, but they don't ever have a team to tell them, yo, that, the record was whack. That's just trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. beat was or, garbage. Or, 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 or like, yo, listen, you need to go rehearse and you need to, you know, perform with a with a performance track and not rap around with yourself. Right. Like, there's, so there's so many different aspects to music that that people don't even look at anymore. But they just because they see the check and they're like, yo, we can make a quick lick. And you know what else I'm noticing? Mm-hmm. I'm noticing that a lot of content creators do do, do music. Yeah, a lot of But them they music. hide it in between they, what they doing content. and then they get lit off of doing stupid stuff or mm-hmm. whatever they doing to get mm-hmm. lit. Mm-hmm. And then they want to come out with a rap. Because mm-hmm. they got they got the numbers and that's what the labels sit there and they be like, oh, you got numbers and we can teach you how to rap. Like that's, that's what I'm that's saying. Really what it even is. That's what's that, crazy. Even before, but Mike, even before they get there though, a content creator can say, I'm going to put a record out, right? And remember, every million streams is 3,900, let's say four grand. So let's just say on Spotify. So let's just say that artist, that said artist has, let's say 10 million followers. And let's just say half of those followers listen stream to- Stream his music, right. Stream his music. You know, four times five. Yeah, like he done made yeah. X amount of dollars. And he's like, wait a minute, if I can do this consistently, I can make a quick check off of just music right. and it helped me fund something else. So he, he, he or she is figuring out that it's, it's a business, but it's also a numbers game too. So the more music that you put up is the market share. That's what that's what streaming is. So, you know, people are like, oh, well, I don't get paid like that. Well, because certain artists like Drake has 
a lot of the market share. Right. When he has over a billion streams, billion. they're forcing, you know, the algorithm is forcing people to listen to that. To that, And that's when I say forcing, meaning is guiding them to that. Brainwashing right? people, yeah. man, I know. But then, but look, then you got, then, you know, they, they, they put something out maybe like a month or two ago and said that people upload music, didn't have nobody listen to their music. So, you know, mm. they upload, you can go on somebody's streaming right now on a platform that says zero. And that's why with, with, our, wow. uh, with, our, with our content creators that are actually music artists, I tell them, I say, yo, bro, if you go on your Spotify right now and it says you have 100 people or 20 people or 13 people listening, you got to be thankful for that because there are people now that are uploading their music and there's nobody listening. listening to it. So for us, from a manager standpoint, we, we're we invested in all, all facets of their business. So it's not just the music side, it's also the content creation side. It's what you do with the monetize from the content mm -hmm. creation side. From the content creation side, we go into the YouTube side, from the YouTube side, we go and then we build it from the brand side, from the brand side. There's so many, it's multifaceted. But with us, we have to be in all inclusive with all that stuff because of how we operate, especially with having our own location. Right. So we, we do have a 2,500 square foot production studio in you know in New York City. Do they come? That's a that's the shameless plug. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> this space. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Holla at them. You don't want to go there. Um what was the most difficult task that y'all had to overcome as a group? As a partnership. I I, I would say when he lost his wife. Yeah. Mm. That was very difficult. Um it was as a brother, it was being there for him. And aside from that, it was like, yo, take all the time you need. And the reason why I was able to build and have this partnership was because I had a partner. So in that moment, I had to take the load. Text everybody. We have 4,000 group texts, right? <laughs> Text everybody. Don't hit up, not just hit me, just hit me, just hit me, just hit me, just hit me. So all of that, like, it was like, That's dope. it had to be, it had to be me. Like, because everything that I was... It, it it didn't matter, right? Because we were in the building phase. And again, I'm an active husband. I'm an active father. And now I have, you know, no disrespect to clients. It's like, it's like, it's like children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you want to take care of them. And I didn't have somebody that, that I could, hey, I'm going to take these. You're going to take those. Right. I'm going to do this. You know. It had, to, all all it, it had to be. So, you know. It was the most difficult, but I think it kind of showed our strength as well. Correct. You know what I mean? And I think that showed him really, yo, damn, this is really is my brother. Like, yeah. because that was the th the biggest thing was you got to be good, right? Because our personal values and our personal morals are the same way in business. So no if we tell our clients, yo, your mindset got to be right and you per the person got to be right for the business. How do I, when he's going through something, how do I not have the same thing? No doubt. It's the same exact thing. And that's why you know, as far as us, we're authentic in how we are. That's why our personal is always mirroring our business. And we're just not, we don't handle business differently than we do personal. And, and it's a gift and a curse, to I be honest that. with you. But when we find the right people and, you know, I love that. facts. Yeah. I mean, clearly, I mean, I love that. that was definitely one of the hardest situations in my life, right? So my worst fear happened, right? So. Mm. Having that, um, understanding that, damn, we're in this building phase and this traumatic thing happens to me, right? So not just to me, my kids and our family, and I'm, and I'm like, damn. At one time, I didn't even, I probably even tell Mike. I said, yo, you know, I was, I was, I was beating myself up, like, damn, I'm taking my time away, and I was taking time away to build the buildings and she was dying on me. Like it almost, mm. it messed with me in that aspect. That's right? crazy. So, so, and you know, and the fact that we had to, you know, the, I'm gonna tell you the day that, that woke me up and let me know that I had not just the air and, and the heart of my brother, but also the air and the heart of my clients. Right. So I, I'm driving, my, my wife was from Hollis. So we, we had, a, uh, that's where her funeral was at. So we went, and when I went, my father-in-law calls me. He's like, yo, who's all those people outside in black? Because they weren't inside with the family. They were mm -hmm. all standing outside. So I looked to the right, and it was damn near half the roster with Mike there. So, when, so the support of the individuals that was there, I will never forget that. 
You know what I'm saying? When I walked in, they were all there and the ones that mattered were there, right? And that shit put, it made, it made me understand why I do it. Because you can do all the work you want, but if you don't get the love reciprocated mm -hmm. in any which way, but that right there showed me where they saw me and and how it wasn't like Mike forced them. He just said, "Hey, he sent out a text message, and they all they came. You know what I'm saying? The ones that were supposed to be, they were there. And essentially, it showed me. And while you know grieving and going through this mourning for this phase, this you know we're building, <laughs> we're building this new building. We signed a lease. There was a bunch of things happening at that time. I you know when I got back. My wife passed away. It's coming up to a year now, um, August 10th um, of last year. And, um, you know, I came back to work the 7th. That was only a few weeks. But I couldn't, see, I couldn't sit out too long. And our first meeting back, I always say it, is that we, you know, my first meeting back was at Rock Nation with Mike. You know, and I tell people all the time that I will never forget that's because the first meeting back was in Ty Ty's office. With, with at Rock Nation, Mike and I with Beehive just sitting there discussing some opportunities. And I remember that day on my birthday, because I was born on the 7th, I was looking around and I was like, babe, what, you know, what are you trying to tell me? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is kind of crazy. This is my first meeting back into this. And yeah, yeah, I was still going through it, but the, but the process, what him and I were going through months before this happened, allowed me to have that callus, you know what I'm saying? To know yeah. that things are gonna be all right, but we gotta keep pushing and bro, just catching our stride. Yeah, it still messes with me often, but you know, ultimately it, 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 my wife was, is a person that even when she was in the hospital, she'd be like, yo, you can't do nothing about it. Get to work. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, don't, yeah, you know, you, you sitting here, what can you do? You know, I'm fine. The doctor said, I'm fine. Go, go take your calls, do your emails, go do what you need to do. So I took that same approach, you know, still going through the mourning process uh, or grieving process at that time. It's a lot better now. And essentially just still catching that stride and understanding I got kids I got to live for and do things for them, so, you know? I feel the morale is real high with this. No, 100%. Yeah, man. When you're dealing with somebody that you could, that you really fucking with, that's tight, that's like your brother, yeah. the work get done. Yep. And you don't gotta worry about him sneaking you, you yep. sneaking him. Yep. Yep. It just feels so much better. Mm -hmm. Now, being that y'all two is too good, you know, I can see that y'all yeah. good dudes. Yeah. I can feel the energy, right? How do you stop the snakes from coming in? Because they say good people only attract leeches. Yeah, and and I, and, and and honestly, I really felt that prior to this scenario. I feel like. I want to say 90% of the people that we attract now are good people. Mm. I think our antennas are more up. We've had people that were involved and they bounce. Yeah. We have a short tolerance for that because we're trying to build something that none of us have done before. So, mm. you know, everything is legacy play for us. Mm. You know what I mean? I say it's for our grandkids that we don't even have. Donald tell clients it's for your kids that don't even hear. Like, that's what we're building. And if you don't feel that, and you can't rock with that, then you could get the fuck out. Yes. Dead ass. Like, Facts. it's not even, and I'm not, I'm super passionate about us, about what we got, about what we're doing. I'm positively selfish. Facts. Facts. Like, I'm not foul at all. You know what I mean? But we are doing what we got to do, and, yo, we old enough to sit there yep. and see and be like, eh, this don't feel right. There's something. Whereas in the past, me personally, I might have given it a few months. And got burned. Let's just yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll be on. Listen, it's just, it's just what it is. When energies are right, that it's not a conversation. It's you, you feel that. Mm -hmm. You feel it. It's Spiritual. like you, right. Yeah. You can't, you can't explain that. And <laughs> if you don't know that, you know, like it's this is not fake. This is not. Positivity is a trend now. And everybody right. likes to throw these quotes. Right. And everybody say all this. And it's like, my man, that, that's not even you. I've been around you. I know how you are. Come on, B. Stop it. Right? We are who we are. Nah, that's yes. it. And that's Sick. the same thing. Clients. Whoever you are, yo, Flo, you, you are who you are. We don't ask anybody to be anything different than what they are. You come into our fold, 
That'll be you. We're not going to tell you to change this. It's what it is. Do it's who you do. It's, yeah. it's who you are. And on top of that, he changed He changed the meaning of FOMO. What did you change? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah focusing on myself only. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. You got all the acronyms, yo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm an acronym Mark king, yo. Yeah, yo. I'm an acronym king, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah. So Ask Chicle. Chicle, no, I got all yeah, the acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> so the, and, 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 and make me one for flow, bro. <laughs> yeah. but now, I got you. Now, I got you. But, now, but, but that essentially, and he, he put the caption in when he said focus only on you know, on himself, he was just saying the things that around him. Like, mm-hmm. so it's, so the team. I said me, yeah, yeah, right? My family, family and the team, my team. And that's it. So ultimately, everything else, you know what I'm saying, we definitely put up a border. Like, you know, at the end of the day, most people are going to always want to see if they can leash in, right? So they, they they come around, they see, they look at this, and like, man, this is real nice and shiny. Look what they got going <laughs> on. Look how many influences they got. Look at the reach they can have. Look at, let me figure this out. Difference is that they don't even know that we already sized them up before they even walk through the door. So mm-hmm. where they think they may be even, I remember it's two of us now. So right. if one of it don't catch it, the other one That's is. That's a fact. And the biggest part about that is, is that most of our influences, well, one of our influences is heightened. Once he once he smells it, him too, he'll come about, yo, let me talk to you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and he could tell, and those aspects is is definitely because of what the energy is. You know, it'll flow. When you do have a chance, I want you to come to the space. I'm definitely and when coming. You, and when you come to the space, you'll see it. Like, yo, wait a minute. I see exactly what y'all talking about here. Yeah. You heard Chastity talking about it. She don't want, she feels in there. She Actually, we have this skylights, and we call it this, the, 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 light, the light of God. You know what I'm saying? We have our meetings, right? We don't turn no lights on in there. So when you come in there, you think the lights are on, and it's not. It's, it's just bright. It's yeah. just super bright. And the sunlight, and it's, it's actually where our meeting spot is. So the light comes I'm right in. Up. Yeah, nah, 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 yeah. It's dope. The it's light is right in there. They come in there, they sit down, and they're like, yo, listen, we feel the energy. And that's essentially what this is. Everybody talk about they feel this energy. And Mike is like, yo, Mike and I just be like, yo, listen, because we're good people, you know, the trust, honesty, integrity, success, we we live by that. And you know, I remember somebody said, damn, if I get F by a company yeah, yeah, yeah. stamp stands for trust, honesty, and serious success, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, done. <laughs> I'm done. I don't want nothing. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's that our shit gift is and dope. our curse. It's our gift like, and our curse. That's yeah. what it is. Like me and him, not that to not to dope. beat a dead horse, you know what I mean? Peter, whoever I'm, I'm it's a saying, beat a dead horse. Sorry. Um <laughs> what you call it? We what you say, t- beat a dead horse. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but the thing is, is that I always tell everybody, you know, you got people that they give you the shirt off your back. Yeah. Me and Don give you the skin yeah. off our back. I feel right? That, and that's where people, it's like, done it so long. And this is what I was telling him. I was telling my wife this the other day. Like, I was just like, I've given enough to the universe and karma. I'm a good person. If you don't know that, you don't know me. If you think anything malice comes from this side, you don't know me and that's okay. Not putting energy into anything that doesn't, either reciprocate. And again, I'm not saying, hey, I give you, what, what about this? It's It has to be for here. It's always, he and I are so, yo, can you connect me with such and such? Or yeah. could you do this? And yeah. immediately, I've had to stop myself and I've told him, yo, yeah. I'm proud of myself. Because I've immediately wanted to be like, yeah, because you always want to help. Oh, yeah. But it's like, why am I going to put energy into something out there? And it's not because I'm foul. Yo, the energy needs to be put back in here because yeah. we're trying to build something. I can't keep putting my energy to everybody out there. He can't keep doing that. We have enough that we got to do. You know what I'm saying? So we can't, we can't, we can't do that anymore. Yeah, y'all heard that, and I'm happy you ended off with that. Um, let people know your your social medias, man. Oh That's yes, <laughs> my social media. <laughs> right. So first, first and foremost, it's this group: T H I T H I S G R O U P I N C. That's the company this group page. Inc. And then my page. <laughs> Which he's not going to respond. No. <laughs> <laughs> so don't think about DMing that. No, it's um, it's this, T-H-I-S, period, M-Y-Q, Mike. Yeah, well, he already gave you the company page. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? You but I'm going to say it again, page. though. It's this, T-H-I-S, group, I-N-C. And my personal page is this dot Donovan because right. I'm a real Jamaican. So when right. people it's hear all good. Donovan, Donovan. <laughs> Donovan. so far, so far, it's, so, it's, so, it's so real, right? Because when Chaz gave me, um, she gave me an Instagram. She said, "Follow him now because he's expecting you." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, this motherfucker don't talk to nobody, yo." She said, "Follow him now. He's expecting you." Yeah, yo. I was like, that's "Wow, damn, yeah, that's yeah. crazy." And he, and he uh, you know, he, un, you know, that's he's bad. he's public now, so yeah, now you know, people can follow him. That's bad. Thanks for coming to the show. Nah, Flo, appreciate oh, you for I sure, for you, sure. Nah, likewise. Oh.
Likewise, bro. Y'all see what it is. Moving forward with this group, Inc. We out. Yes. Shout out Duce.